what is it audrey the 26th, 26th. can you believe of may no i can't believe it may just is like whoop. but uh yeah we're here and uh in spite of everything we're here on tuesday to work together we've been doing this show watch me work for 11 years i'm susan Lee parks i'm the master writer of the public theater and um we we've been coming together for 11 years now to uh, work together to support each other and for me to ask you questions about your creative process um whether it's writing or whatever and where we can talk together about your creative process so um, a lot of people get confused about that title watch me work they think it's about slp's work but uh, it is not it's about you and your creative process. What we do have a lot of time to do is work together, whatever your project might be, and to talk with you about your creative process. We don't have time to talk with you about something specific you're working on, like, you know, the care, you know, like that, but process, big picture questions so that everybody can um, be a part of the conversation, whether you have a question or not. Um, Audrey, well, I almost, said, I almost called you Rebecca for some reason. Yeah, um, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Audrey will tell you how to get in touch should you have a question. Go, girl. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I would like to let you know how to, how to answer questions. Basically, uh, what you need to do if you're inside of the Zoom um, is you'll press the raise your hand button on the participant tab. It's likely on the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on a tablet or an iPad. If you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can ask, ask us questions via social media. You can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Or you can tweet at the Public Theater, at Public Theater NY, or go to our Instagram there. And that's all. So many ways to get in touch. Okay, we're going to work together for 20 minutes, and then we're going to talk with you about your work and your creative process. Here we go.
All right. Yay. Yeah, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're here. We never left, really. Um, and we're now we're going to, if uh, anybody has thought, questions, considerations, concerns. We've got a question. Yeah. All Ooh. right, Reggie, you're up. Can you hear us? Mm. Hello. Oh. Mm. There we go. Hi, Susan and Laurie. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm a huge fan of your work. Hey, um, my question for you is, um, I started a 30 for 30 project where I write a poem a day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm primarily a poet. One of my favorite works of yours is 365. So I really wanted to go back into the process as I am trying to continue doing a poem a day, um, even throughout the year as much as I possibly can. Uh -huh. I wanted to ask you what that experience was like, keeping that stamina up, and how you found inspiration to mm -hmm. really just trudge on. Mm -hmm. And um, if you even cheated <laughs> and maybe did two plays in one day. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to just hear your, sure. uh, your, uh, what you learned from that and what you could share. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, it's tricky because this is supposed to be about your work and your creative process. So we're going to make it, <laughs> Reggie, we're going to make it um, as much about you as we possibly can <laughs> by asking you things like, how's it go? When did you start? How's it going? How far along are you? Well, I started uh, in April and it was all junky stuff that I was cooking. And then all of a sudden, after 15 days, the seed sprouted and then it just started to just, I was like on attack and it kept going and I was just shocking myself. Um, I would look at Poetry Foundation for their poem of a day oh, yeah, or right. American Academy of Poets looking at their poems um, the intensity of the pandemic was, uh, heart was, was intense. So the feelings were there and, and finding itself, um, through, um, I am experiencing some burnout now that there's this mm -hmm. seasonal shift <laughs> and, um, sometimes music would be, uh, a good catalyst, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for myself, but, um, I mean, uh, so 30 for 30. So you're, you've passed, I'm, I'm guessing you passed the 30, you, you, you've done 30 for 30. So now you, but now you're going to keep going. Is that what you, I'm hearing? I'm going, I'm trying to go as much as I can. Oh, I've been great. working with, uh, my, uh, fellow playwright, Sujin, who uh -huh. we're both writing together because of this practice. So, um, we, we've been writing together and just, fantastic. Uh, working together to encourage us to keep going. But I think I'm going the Monday through Friday schedule and just uh -huh. giving the weekends uh -huh. a little bit of a break. Um, so you'll, so you'll, I mean, but you said you're going to do this challenge. So you're going to write. So that means you're going to write like two poems on Monday and two poems on Friday. <laughs> um, I'm not letting you off the hook, yo. I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to write, uh, uh, if I cheat, I, I, I don't know. I, I even allowed myself to do a haiku oh. um, if I needed to oh. give myself that. I have the haiku card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that in your place, you had a play <laughs> called Libby, Libby Split, which was all action and very mm -hmm. terse. And mm -hmm. it was um, going through the motions. Going through the motions. <laughs> I, I, I was wouldn't say that. Split. I, I, think, I, I hear, but I hear something in your, in what you said. And I just, I have to, I have to call it out. So you said you have the haiku card. Now, it, does that mean that a haiku in your mind is not a real poem? I mean, what do you, cause here's the key, dude. Here's the key, Reggie. Sorry. It's like uh, quality is the thing that's going to bite you in the booty, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get all hung up on like, it's gotta be a poem, you know, that gets published in, I don't know, your favorite, uh, the, you know, the New Yorker or whatever you hold in high regard, you know what I mean? I mean, any of those esteemed places or publications, um, then that's gonna bite you in the booty. 
if but you know if you say it's a poem it's something i'm writing that's a poem then you're doing what we i talk about a lot you lower the bar and you allow yourself to write a poem right and that's the secret <laughs> to my success in all <laughs> forms actually just get the shit out there you know and then and then you could you know if you want to publish them or whatever you want to have a reading or whatever then you can get into rewriting and all that kind of cool stuff you know but if you want to try if you want to continue just i mean you sure you can give yourself weekends off don't please you know that that's there's nothing wrong with that but if you want to do the one a day then consider just lowering the bar and being okay with just doing what you can do. I mean, like I have also have a daily yoga practice. I get on my mat most days and I go, we do not have to be heroic. <laughs> you know, I don't have to try for that pose that I've been looking at on the poster for the last 40 <laughs> years. You know what I mean? I mean, really, we just have to breathe in, breathe out, blah, 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 blah you know? You were going to say something, Reggie. What were you yes, I'm very quick. Um, having another person that I was that we were exchanging was uh -huh. a good catalyst. I also had other drafts of things, so that way, I, I, if I couldn't come up with something, then I, I had another seed that I could like put out there. So even though I was going for the poem a day, I also allowed myself to uh, plant other seeds mm -hmm. and to cook other pots. There you so go. that way, like. If something like didn't come out, then I had other things to draw from, and I'm wondering uh, if that's if that uh, is a good kind of practice yeah. to have other because I know that I gotta show something to my friends. So if I, if nothing's coming, then I I can whip this seed, this peanut sure. butter sandwich. Sure, you can you can do that. I mean, it's your game. You're making up the rules. You know, you're, you're completely allowed to do that. You're also completely allowed to show your friends something that's not good, whatever that means. And that could make things suddenly very interesting. Suddenly you have a real friend. You know what I mean? I mean, like my, my husband, you know, who's over there off camera. You know, I read him all kinds <laughs> of shit. I read this, what do you think, honey? He's like, mm. you know, I mean, that means you're really in a, in a, in a, your relation, it takes your relationship to the next level. So you can do that, but sure, you can, you can do anything you want. It's your game. You're making up the rules. You know, if you want to pick up an old thing and, and, and try it out. Great. Great. This ex this this journey you're on might give you some fuel too. Oh my gosh. I haven't looked at that. Into, I wrote it 10 years ago. Now I got finally figured out how to do the rewrite. You know, you know what I mean? So sure, you're totally allowed to do that. You're giving to yourself by showing up every day um, or five days a week, if that's what you want. So, Thank you so much. You just gave me a new poem of the day. There you go. So I'll write about that tomorrow. See, about there you go. <laughs> right? Right. And also, I mean, Reggie, just so you know, I mean, there's so many sources of inspiration, some of them not as uplifting as we would like. There is the news, my friend, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if you're ever, you know, you guys, what do I write about today? Here's that news feed. It's like sticking your head in the sewer or in the toilet, someone else's toilet, a public <laughs> toilet that belongs to who knows who, but there is a lot of shit in there. So, you know, and we say you shit for fuel. So there we go. We have plenty of stuff. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank okay. you so, so much. Thank you. Gave me so much. I've got at least five poems. There you go. See? See? That'll, t that'll take you. See? <laughs> now you're writing on Saturday again. That's what we wanted. Ha -ha. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thank Reggie. You. Thanks, Reggie. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Paul. Paul, are you with us? Hey, I am. Thank you so hey. much. Paul? Thank you so much for just this platform and uh, for doing this, guys. Uh, so, my question is about frustration. Um, mm -hmm. Just in the artistic process. Yeah, the, the green-eyed beast. Gah. Um, I have been experiencing a lot of frustration in creating that is sort of new to me. Um, 
I've lived a pretty freaking privileged life. I haven't had much difficulty and I've experienced my upsets. I've experienced traumatic events and bad mm-hmm. things in my life, but it's uh, experiencing frustration in my work is making me realize, I think how unprepared I am to, to work with it, to work through it and to let it propel me forward. Um, I was practicing the other day. Uh, I, I do music, I, I sing and uh, do vocal looping a la Reggie Watts. Oh, okay. And uh, I got so frustrated singing. My voice wasn't like working out well. I, I slapped myself. I like physically slapped myself. And I literally feel like the least angry person in my world. I, I never feel anger. Uh, I just feel very unprepared to sort of bump up against it and let it uh, move me forward. I don't know how to deal with it, I think, in a big way. Can, can we get, can we make a guess? I mean, if you became so frustrated in your own process that you slapped yourself and then you say you're the least angry person. <laughs> so I would, and this is the thing, I would say that perhaps you have, like all of us, I hope, have some anger. I mean, if you don't, I mean, like Joe Biden would say, if you're not angry right now, you're not black. No, but if you're not angry right now, you're not awake. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, totally. I mean, you, because there's so many things to be angry about. You could be angry about having to wear a mask or not having to wear a mask or whatever. I mean, th- just, and that's just one thing. Yeah. So, so your, your feelings are coming up. You know, your voice might be changing in a good way. Interesting. You know, you're feeling some feelings that maybe you haven't felt before, it sounds like. Yeah. You know? Where do you feel? Is it a uh, so you're a, a vocalist? Where do you feel it in your body? Can you say where you feel this frustration? Uh, throat. It's like a lump in the throat, it's and like it's obviously throat. doing vocal stuff comes from. I, I mean, it shouldn't come from your throat. I think it should come from lower, but it gets sort of caught in the throat. And we notes. have we. There are no shoulds on. This <laughs> there are no shoulds. There's only whatever the fuck it is. And that's, <laughs> And you know what? You're feeling it in your throat, and that's exactly great. You know, so you have this 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 lump in your throat. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're a vocalist, so that oh, that that sounds like an awful feeling, mm-hmm. and it just sounds like stuff is coming up. Yeah. You know, and so as artists, no matter what our our how we make our work or or what kind of work that we do, even if we're not artists you know, let the feelings come up. It might, it might well change the kind of work you're doing. I think I'm interested in the, the sort of uh, difference. I think this plays into it between practice and performance, because so mm-hmm. much of what I do is uh, trying to hone these specific skills. I play keys as well, in addition uh-huh, okay. to singing. So I practice them separately in order to sort of combine them into these improvisational performances that are right. totally audience field and are super on the fly and uh-huh. really demand uh, the act of being viewed. Um, uh-huh. So when I'm not being viewed, there's less impetus to perform and play, which I find very easy in a big way. And I think the, really the frustration only comes out in these sort of dedicated moments of practice of, of sort of rudimentary, like uh, time to play my C scale and time to fucking ah! like uh-huh. uh, in those nonsense moments where I'm trying That's to. That's interesting. Drill. Have yeah. you ever read, um, there are two books, they're, they're written by the same people, I think. The Inner Game of Tennis, have you ever read that book? No. It's okay, forget that book. <laughs> There's another book called Done. The Inner Game of Music by uh-huh. the same, I think it's the, it's the same people, at least it's one of the same people. And the guy, uh, uh, I forget his name, he talks about how, you know, we think that practice should be like fun, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? If we think of like, I mean, anything, like um, like you're practicing your scale. I mean, I play g- guitar mostly. So, you know, practicing mm. your scales or your chords or whatever. It's, he says, he, he suggests that it, it, it should be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's when you're really doing the work. Yeah. We all have this thing that I'll sit down at my journal and I'll just write, which is a, a writer's version of practicing your scales, right? Or practicing. Mm-hmm. It should feel great. Or I sit down and work on my novel and it just all pours out and, you know, oh, yeah. it's great. But actually, practice, it's okay if practice doesn't feel comfortable because you're getting to your deep stuff. Yeah. maybe and you're polishing it and you're working on it um and maybe you work on it so that performance might be more enjoyable or there, there might be an aspect of, of of your process that might be enjoyable but right maybe the the fact that your practice 
is difficult is what's bothering you. Yeah. You know, let it be difficult. You know, you say you lived a privileged life. You know, you're walking into your Thunderdome, dude. I mean, wa- go in there, go into your lion's den. This is, you have, t- you know, this is why you're on this path. What are you going to do? Have just a happy, I'm a happy artist. I make happy music. I'm never angry. There are a lot of things to be angry about. Today, you look on the news, look above the fold of the Huffington Post. See that man's face and the cop's knee on his neck. You know, feel, feel. We need you to be angry. You know what I mean? And you need you to be angry. So go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for, thanks for the question. It's a beautiful question. And it's one we might come back to often. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your question. Thanks, man. Thank you, Paul. All right. Up next, we've got Catherine. Uh, Catherine, are you here? Hi. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I have a question about revision. Mm -hmm. Because my process right now in this particular play I'm writing, it's it's not a story I'm writing beginning to end. I'm doing like the, you know, Irene Fornes write a scene. And so I've piled up a bunch of scenes. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a chronological play ever or a nonlinear one. It's just I have a bunch of scenes. And, and so I'm wondering, when will I get a clue to stop writing more scenes and then go back and start doing a, another draft of it? I know. It might, it might take you the, you know, you might live to be 112 and it, you might, you know, the, the, the day you know on your 112th birthday i think now i've written enough scenes now i gotta put i mean i i i don't know what i do know is i i, I my guess is that you'll reach a point where you're like you'll feel it like are you are you in a relationship dicey question i know go ahead sort of. <laughs> maybe sort of sort, sort, oh, sort of maybe oh <laughs> That's, it's the same kind of feeling when you meet someone you'd like to spend a little more than a coffee with you know there's a feeling there you know yeah. um, when you when you maybe if you're writing a scene and you're like yeah i could get into that scene i could get into the subject of that scene there's a feeling there that draws you to it right mm-hmm. so you're you're it's a feel thing and it's something that um it's not that you'll necessarily know it when you get there because different people some people never know but i have confidence that if you keep writing and enjoy the process that you and you keep you know you have three ears right two and then probably one here right Mm -hmm. keep one of your ears open for is it time to assemble ask you i mean or you can also ask yourself yeah you know what you're saying that and i'm like here's what's happening I know that there's some really scary, serious scenes that have to go in and I'm not doing it. Like I'm like, hey, I don't want it. And I bet when I do that, that that's gonna be the puzzle piece. There you so go. the real question for me is like, okay, just re- remove, you know, show, be, go ahead, do it. Cause I, I guess I'm scared to write those scenes. It's okay, it's okay to be scared. We're all scared or we should be. Again, <laughs> we should be angry. We should be scared. We should be hopeful and joyful and loving. We also also angry and scared. It's okay to be scared. You know, um, you can, the tricky, the, the, the fun thing about being scared is that now, okay, so, the, you know, it's like any great hero, you know, Wonder Woman. I don't know, was she scared? She was in the movie, right? Da, 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 she, you know, she had fear, you know, and Luke Skywalker, you know, they all had fears and Princess Leia and they all, they all you know, they didn't go without fear. Um, but they also, um, had an arsenal of tools to help themselves through their fear, embrace their fear, manage their fear, dice it up in little pieces. We have this, which is great. Not this one, but it's a timer. We have time to help us manage our fear. So if you, again, if you're training for a marathon and you're afraid, right? I don't know, you know, if, whether you're a marathon or not, pretend you're not. And you, I say, great, train for a marathon. Catherine, go out and run run for 10 minutes, right? Time is going to help you manage your, your, your fear, your distance from where you are now to the goal, all those things. So you take your timer, which is why we use it every day when we're here 
and you set it for 10 minutes and write on your scary scene. I'm calling it a scary scene because you said it was scary for 10 minutes, yeah. 10 minutes, three times a day, maybe mm -hmm. just a little inch forward. Right. Okay. That's fabulous. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually don't have a next question quite yet. Uh -huh. we'll just... Oh, just kidding. I... That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah. Um, sorry, my unmute. Uh, there you go. Hi. Hi. Um, hi, Susan Laurie. Uh, I have been coming here most days every day for the last, whatever it's been now, a couple months, and this has been a sanctuary. So thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. I I'm plug it in my charger. Sorry, I had to plug in my computer because it's down to like two percent. Okay, okay, there we go. Now I'm, I'm ha ha. Yes. The sanctuary requires electricity. So, <laughs> this um, is this. question is: I asked this a similar one, a similar question to you last month or so. Mm. Um, <laughs> it was about um, that was about like being. That question was about like if. I was writing a play at the time mm -hmm. and I felt myself like very um, often just writing things from my own personal life into the play. Mm -hmm. And your advice was like, that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. don't be so hard on yourself. And that was very good and very helpful. Now, um, so that I was writing that play as part of a class and that play, that class is over. Oh. Um, and it was a first draft class and I have a first draft, which is really good. Yay. Thank you. Um, but now I want I want to be continuing to work on creative stuff, um, like I don't know plays, a, another play or a novel or something creative. But I find myself sort of like only being only being able to write in the form of my journal. Like I I I, I don't know. I have I have this my sort of writing process. I guess is I just sort of like am I live and then when I like get the feeling that something can be written, I have I try to have a tremendous amount of respect for that feeling and like do everything I can to get to a computer slash my journal to write stuff down. But these days, I don't. I feel like the only things that I feel like I get that bug to write about are just like shit in my own life, which is very valuable and good that I'm writing about that. But I. I guess my question is about like, I wanna write something creative, but I also don't have, I don't feel like I have the infrastructure to like force myself to like sit down and write something creative. Like I wanna follow that sort of intuitive bug. Um, but I also wanna understand writing as like a practice that maybe like, isn't always just gonna like come to me as you said to Paul's question um, before. So I, so I don't know if, if you can like pull a question out of everything I've said or no, like just um, so you, you finished your you finished a draft of your play that yeah. you had written for a class right which was is really really great and now you want to go forward and write something new yeah it, so it sounds like you're doing a lot of journal writing so it sounds like you show up for your journal quite a bit yeah right daily would you say um daily I if not daily, then every other, no, yes. I'd say probably like five to seven times a week. Okay, great, great. So you, sh you have, a, so you have a writing practice. If I, you know, you know, say, sometimes we don't, sometimes we say, you know, like, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a head cause I can't see it, you know? <laughs> you, know you, have a, you know, so sometimes we have to mirror each other. This is part of what this community is. And I say, guess what? I see your writing. I see your writing practice. I see your writing practice. You have one, right? You have one. It's a five to seven day a week writing practice that mostly takes place in your journal. That mostly you talk about what you're going through. Again, I'm going to say that is a totally valid thing to write about. There are great, uh, uh, what do they call? I forget what they're called, but there's Sp like Spalding Gray, for example. You've heard of, have you heard of Spalding Gray? Yeah, totally. Okay, Mike Daisy is, an, is a more contemporary person who does that kind of thing. I mean, people who do, you know, their lives are, you know, their, their lives are the subject and the main subject of the thing, which is a very beautiful form, I think. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's also navel gazing, which you're allowed to do. If that's, you know what I'm saying? Where you're just like kind of into your own thing all the time. That's, that's okay too. If it 
is your writing practice, it will change. You know, so I would say the thing is, what kind of thing do you think you want to do? Um, something like comedy. Uh -huh. something a fun. play, a movie, a teleplay. Uh, what are you thinking? I, I, I'm, I'm really, so I'm going, I'm getting an MFA next year in dramaturgy and- oh, uh, Okay, where? At Columbia. Okay, great. Um, and I, in talking about that to people, everyone's asked like, oh, so you must love theater. What's your favorite theater? And I actually don't love a lot of theater. I think mm -hmm. I love like the potential for theater as a space uh -huh. for like live human stuff to go down. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like a lot of the theater I've seen is very like dead inside and no, mm -hmm. no humanity mm -hmm. exists within it. So I want to, I want to create, I'm like going into this program sort of as like an act of faith that like mm -hmm. my in the theater, which is based on like very little empirical stuff that I've enjoyed mm -hmm. is possible. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'd want to create something that like somehow speaks to that, speaks to like my uh, belief in the theater as a space that can do the things uh -huh. that I see a lot of theater failing to do. Uh -huh. So you have, you want to write a theater piece and you want it to be some comedy thing. Like okay. improvised, uh, spontaneous sort of, um, I don't know, like. I would just, you know, I think, how, how long has it been since you finished your class? Um, like three weeks. Great, okay. I would say, make sure, make sure you have your writing practice every day. How long do you write in your journal? How many minutes do you put on your timer? What do you say? I don't have a timer. Okay. I it's probably like 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, 30 minutes. Okay, you can make it, you can have it 30 minutes twice a day. Can you okay. do that? Okay, instead of a big hour where your mind can wander a lot, give yourself 30 minutes twice a day. At the end of every other day, Okay. ask yourself, hey, self, what's the story? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Just yeah. what's, what's the story I want to tell? You know what I mean? But you're going to be doing two things. You're going to be putting the time in, which is crucial to getting any work done. And you're, be go you're going to keep that third ear, third eye, eye ear open to kind of have a vision about where am I going? What, is, what, am, I, what am I putting out here? Okay? okay. Just, that's going to be your writing practice. I would say for right now, don't worry about you know, changing theater forever or writing something that's going to all bring us back from the dead or anything like that those are those are big great things that one day hopefully you will you know manifest for yourself um but i would say just put the time in and keep your eyes open for what is it that i'm trying to write i think you know okay but definitely keep put the time in that's the most important thing and buy a timer they're really cheap and it's not your phone okay <laughs> okay thanks for coming back thanks Thank man. You so much isn't it? thanks isaiah all right, we've got about eight minutes left um, and we're gonna go to Bronwyn. Bronwyn, are you with us? Yes, hi. 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 First of all, I'm, I'm so sorry that I, uh, oop, yeah, that I ended up coming late. I um, have a lot of work stuff going on now, unfortunately, but oh. so, but I'm, but I'm so glad to be here and so honored to like get to learn from everybody here and from you, Susan Laurie. This is really just immense. This is incredible. Um, and I guess that's my question was that, but um, so in this time of COVID, I've especially been feeling this and I'm, and I'm not totally sure where this pressure comes from internal or external, it's obviously a mix of both to be writing work that's specifically COVID related in some way. And, um, and, but the reality was that I was before COVID, I was working and for years, for almost seven years, I've been working on this opera based off of this, um, this fabulous character in the book of judges that mm -hmm. like, it's a daughter who gets sacrificed by her dad. And it's very mm -hmm. like, if it Janai inspired and it's like, and it was in this like apocalyptic punk opera, you know, where basically like, you know, fuck the man, men do whatever they please, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it's like terrible. And like, if only there was a militia of women, they would take over, haha, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. but, it was, but it was all felt very extremely relevant and the fact of the matter is that I was working on it for like seven years because sadly to say I could there was no shortage of material around the brutalities against women globally mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, there was endless, endless material that fed into it. And for some, and basically since COVID hit and since the quarantine hit, I have been feeling this like horrible feeling that like somehow that work isn't relevant now. Um, and so I guess my question is like, you know, how do you sort of, in some ways, like, how do we deal with the fact that maybe people need sort of COVID related art or direct COVID response art right now? And how do we sort of resolve maybe that, that feeling with the pieces we maybe, I don't know, maybe the pieces we were writing that maybe on some of what we feel are, I don't know, were only relevant in the world before COVID. And also apologies if a question like this was already asked. No, no, a question like this has never been asked. I, I don't think, well, but the relevance of work is, is, is a really important question, Brahman, and it's great that you're asking it. Um, so let's see, how do we do this like a math problem? So if there were never a shortage of uh, stories or th th things concerning violence against women, that's what you, right? Yeah. Before, say January 1st or whenever we all start saying COVID, 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 March the 1st or whenever, do you mean that there, that all those cases have stopped? Right. Right? The thing, uh, yeah, so, so, so I would say that there are still, and I, I have read things and I, you know, I, I've just in passing that, for example, cases of domestic violence have gone up. That's what I have read. So, and not to reduce your piece to a piece about domestic violence, but I'm just saying there, I think um, my opinion is more than ever, uh, we are going to, we need, and we will always need, and we're going to need plays that help us uh, uh, unravel the tangle of our humanity. COVID, no COVID. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's, uh, I, I would, I mean, I, I anticipate uh, a great wealth of COVID related plays or shows or novels or whatever when we come back and that kind of makes me go, uh, we've all lived through it. Now we're gonna have to go and pay to see some people explain it to us. Oh, you know, that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be an interesting sort of contract that we're all agreeing in. Let's go and last, let me go see your COVID play if you see mine and I'll read her COVID novel as he, she reads his and, you know, and, and um, yeah. So that's interesting. I would say, not knowing much about your work except what you said, please write it. <laughs> please please write it because that's the kind of work that I want to see because I bet you that's going to tell me everything I need to know about what happened in COVID because I bet some of most of the stuff that happens in your opera is the reason why we're here and people getting together to talk about and deal with the stuff that's in your opera might help us untangle some of the mess here so to say we only need plays and novels that tell us about what we've all experienced, we might need some, we will need some, but now everybody, we got to walk lockstep and if we're not writing about COVID, then we're not relevant. Right. You know? Yeah. It's only one of the things that we're going through right now. There's also climate change. Hello! <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? right. But the, the grasping and the, I mean, I, you can hear them almost, the vultures and the maggots swarming around the, the, the body of COVID. <laughs> now we're going to make a piece about it and feed it back to people. That's, it's very, it's going to be very interesting. You know, and we'll all, we should all do at least one COVID something. You know, you can do it on the side in your spare time. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so. Thank ah. you. That's my rant. That's my soapbox. There I was on the soapbox. Okay, quick, another question. I can get off my soapbox. Quick, quick. Thank you. Quick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have one more question. We have one more minute. Uh, Crystal, are you unmuted? It's my button today. Oh, there we go. Hi. Hey, Crystal. How you doing, girl? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. 
Um, so my question is, I'm more, I'm right now I'm juggling two projects and mm -hmm. was, you, you know, my father had passed away and stuff and the funeral yeah. was last week. And oh. um, so what I've been doing is I've been writing a play called the father chronicles, which is kind of like the dining room where it has like just a bunch of vignettes and monologues, uh -huh. and relationships, not not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, but uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, they're all different scenario setups. Uh -huh. I guess my question is, um, how do I tread carefully, emotionally, mm. um, because it is so fresh, it's, it's very fresh, and I can mm. tell um, I've had my own complexities with my relationship with my father, but like, I, now I'm digging in and I'm doing things like you said, like, yeah, I use truth, but also use, you know, fabrication. Mm -hmm. um, but as I'm writing more, I'm kind of realizing more is coming out from personal experience than thought. So mm -hmm. what could I do to at least be in an emotionally safe place as I do those things? Right. Hmm. You might have to you know, it, it, if you really want to write about uh, the subject you want to write about, you know, your dad and your relationship with your dad, you might have to go to or less safe than you'd like to go. But again, like we talked with Catherine, the scary, you're going to the scary place, right? So mm -hmm. the one of the tools in the, in the, where the warrior has to go to the scary place, time, the timer. Uh, again you you're gonna you're gonna spend you know 10 minutes in the scary place right 10 minutes in the uncomfortable place 10 minutes in the in the emotionally woo, gosh that feels awful place right yeah and then um you can come out of it and do other things mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you don't have to dive in water over your head swim around you know, um, that's, I don't think that's the best way to work at, because of what you've said. Okay. I think little dips, little trips, gently, go gently. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. I'm sorry your dad passed away. Thank you. All right, sweetheart. I know you're dealing with a lot. And sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Jeez. Thank you so much. I want to say one thing about the COVID thing. If anybody feels moved to write a COVID please, piece, please write, you know, go for it. Of course. If anybody feels moved not to write a COVID piece, don't. You know what I'm saying? If you feel moved to do something, oh my gosh, I have, uh, I have two months off from work or where I get to work from home and suddenly I got a lot of time or whatever and I've always wanted to, you know, fill in the blank. That is what this time is going to mean for you. Okay, it's not the only thing that's going on. It is revealing, as you know, if any of you glance at the news, it is revealing so many things about what's, what our world is really like, right? Um, so, so allow yourself to just be one with the world and, and not think you have to write something that's gonna explain the pandemic to everybody. You know, you know, so if you feel moved to write something, write something. If you feel moved not to, don't. If you, but don't feel, uh, you know, like don't feel that if you don't, or the work that you're working on right now, this is a strand bookmark, by the way, but the work you're working on right now is no longer relevant. Ha! You have to burn it because it's only about this right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a disservice uh, to, your, to yourself and your work. And your strand bookmark okay so just, just so you know i mean do your thing but uh don't feel yeah do what you feel like you need to do okay okay thank you and tomorrow we have a very special guest oh we do oh tomorrow. my goodness tomorrow yeah i want to tell i mean you've probably seen it on the website tomorrow tony kushner is going to be in the house and that is going to be so exciting he's one of my favorite writers and one of my favorite people and i just love hanging out with him so um please do drop in yeah, yeah. Oh, please yeah. come come on down come if you want to 
sign up. You can sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern every single day on the Public Theater website to be inside of the Zoom, or you can always watch on HowlRound.tv. Yeah. We're so excited to have you all. We're so excited to have Tony Kushner. And as always, we're so excited to have SLP. Thank you, Audrey. Okay. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.